What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is all about the R60 T Wing Interceptor. Manufactured by Horish Kessel Drive, the same people that made the R41 Star Chaser and the Luker Hulk. Sold for 150,000 credits, it was a buck more than the X Wing and equal to two and a half TIE Fighters. At a length of 12.2 meters, or 40 feet, it was a porg shorter than the X Wing and about half as long as the Y Wing. At 9.1 meters, or 30 feet wide, it was about half the width of the Slave 1 and 4.5 Wookiees across. While at a height of 5.1 meters, or 17 feet, it was a Wookiee shorter than the TIE Fighter and about half the height of the ATST. Compared to our standard unit of an Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer, you could line up 133 of them from bow to stern. And for some real world comparisons, the R60 would be longer than two Escalades, or about half the length of an 18 wheeler. While it is taller than a semi, and nearly the same height as a Chinook helicopter, while being less than the length of an F-16. One of its most impressive stats is its top atmospheric speed at 1300 km per hour, or 808 miles per hour, which beats the TIE Interceptor, and is equal to the much smaller A-Wing, yet it can't touch the TIE Defender. Its Class 1 hyperdrive let it travel through hyperspace quicker than an Imperial 1 class Star Destroyer, and had it tied with an A-Wing and the X-Wing. Its modest maneuverability rating of 78 DPF made it just better than the X-Wing, but worse than the Z-95 and TIE variants. Its shielding is rated at 20 SPD, which is equal to the Z-95, but only one-fifth the TIE Defender. Its hull is moderate at 14 RU, which is stronger than a TIE Fighter, but weaker than the X-Wing. The R-60's armament is also in this mid-range, being more powerful than a TIE, but still less than the X-Wing, with two laser cannons and two proton torpedo launchers, but only a payload of four torpedoes on board. This single pilot interceptor was another one of Horish Kessel Drive's failures, because even though the stats for this ship are good overall, it did fall short in some key areas. It just didn't come out at the right time, and was weak in some key areas. If you watched our video on their earlier starfighter, the R-41 Star Chaser, you know HKD intended that ship to be the Republic's main starfighter, but it wasn't ready for production in time for the Clone Wars. The R-60 was designed to replace the A-Wing Interceptor, but fell short in some key areas. Though it was cheaper, while still retaining that amazing speed in Class 1 hyperdrive, it only had a third of the Proton torpedoes, and had a shield that was two and a half times weaker, while also having a larger profile. For a Rebellion short on pilots, fighting against a seemingly endless horde of ties, the Rebellion felt that 25,000 more credits was well worth it to keep their ace pilots alive, who had three times the torpedo output each run. What was a less obvious shortcoming of this ship was the quality of the materials, with the few pilots of the R-60 complaining that Horish Kessel Drive was using cheaper parts in their engine and hull reinforcement, which meant that this ship required constant upkeep. To make it worse, these mechanical issues were exacerbated by the constant Nava computer crashes, the result of numerous coding errors that drove the Rebel IT department insane. It seemed that HKD committed the sin of many struggling businesses, who cut corners on their new projects in order to make up for money lost on previous failures, a decision that always sends companies into a downward spiral. The only reason why these ships were still used across the galaxy was because if you did get one of these that wasn't buggy or falling apart, its other stats were objectively good, and because used R60s could sell for 60,000 credits, many in the Outer Rim saw this as an amazing deal. If you got a good one, you could blow through any Imperial Starfighters that got in your way, or just make that quick jump to hyperspace to escape, so you can see why this tempted many criminal organizations. One pirate named Ali Tariq became incredibly efficient with this interceptor, making a name for himself that spread across the whole galaxy, a fame that, funny enough, would help HKD sell more of these ships after the Galactic Civil War than they ever did during the conflict. With the fall of the Empire after the Battle of Endor, the New Republic established a holiday called Remembrance Day, set to be the equivalent of Empire Day. Like Independence Day sales back on Earth, many companies had all kinds of special offers on this holiday, and through a great marketing campaign, HKD was able to create an image of the T-Wing as being a crucial element in the Noble Rebel Alliance. You too could pilot a civilian version of a ship that helped to bring down the Empire, and by just leaving in those fast engines and hyperdrive, it was way more fun to own than the actual hero, the X-Wing, and the A-Wing was just way too difficult to fly, which is why only ace rebel pilots were trusted with it. 
Having failed at making a profit off of these last two wars, Horish Kessel Drive was finally able to make some money in this time of peace. So that's it for its history. And the only behind the scenes fact is that it appeared in the Star Wars TIE Fighter game, but has appeared in Star Wars Galaxies, and was expanded upon in the guidebook Stay on Target. So that's it for the R60 T-Wing Interceptor. If you want to connect with us, help support this channel, or get your own copies of the reference material used to make this video, be sure to check out the links in the description. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe. But most important of all, remember, good marketing beats facts every time, and the Force will be with you. Always.